Come and see how I made this fun sun hat using McCall's 8212. Hi YouTube, I'm Crystal of CrystalSewsAndStuff.com. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a quick demo of how I made McCall's 8212, the hat from McCall's 8212 View E, which is the hat version. So today I'm coming to you from my little garden and everything is really growing up. I'm surrounded by cantaloupes and uh, butternut squash plants and a whole bunch of other things. If you checked out my little tour, you'll see how much is really, really grown. And, today, and so I like to garden and so one of the things that you need when you go out to garden is a nice sun hat to protect you from the sun and to, to give you some sun protection. And so I thought this pattern would be perfect as a garden hat, but you can easily make this and wear it out to the beach or um, anywhere else. And the pattern also comes with a dress pattern as well as a face mask pattern. So this is a really good deal if you wanted to go ahead and pick up this pattern. Again, it's McCall's 8212. The display number is um, 11041. But um, if you look it up on their site, it's going to be McCall's 8212. So all right, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. Okay, so today we're going to be working on McCall's 8212. And we're going to be working on the hat, which is view E. And there are only two pattern pieces for the pattern. You have piece number 10, which is the crown of your hat. And then you have piece number 11, which is the brim of your hat. So make sure you have pieces 10 and 11 for your hat for this pattern. And what you need to cut out is you need to cut out two pieces of the main fabric on the fold for your size. I, I'm doing a size large. And so you cut out two pieces on the fold here. And then you also need to cut out two pieces of interfacing here for the brim. And I'm using a medium weight uh, woven interfacing. I'm using this um, Perfect Fuse Medium from Palmer Plush. And that is the interfacing that I'm using today. And then you also need to cut out piece number 10 and you need to cut out six pieces of your main fabric, six pieces in your lining fabric, and then six pieces in your interfacing. And so that's what you need to cut out for the crown. And make sure you go ahead and mark your dot and as well as your notches here. And on this piece, there's also some notches for the center back for the brush. And lastly, what you're going to need is some 5 8 inch ribbon. And this goes is going to go on the inside of your hat. And so that's all you need to go ahead and make this pattern. So in order to sew up the pattern, the first thing we're going to do is to head on over to the hat section E in your pattern directions. And um, the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and you're going to fuse your interfacing to your main fabric. And you're going to just trim a little bit off here on the corners as indicated in the pattern instructions. So I went on ahead and added the interfacing to the crown pieces as well as to the brim but I've realized that this is going to be a little bit too thin with this interfacing so I decided I'm going to go ahead and interline it and so I have this uh, kind of a medium to lightweight uh, denim white denim and I had my stash left over from an, um, another project and so what I decided to do is go ahead and cut that out and I'm going to interline it to the brim area only just to make it a little bit more stiff because I don't think it'll sit up like this like the lady in the picture has it if I don't add an extra layer of thickness to it. I'm going to go ahead and cut out one more um, section of brim piece number 11 and then I'm going to baste it to um, one of the already interfaced brim pieces and I'm just going to baste it right around the edges all the way around and then 
that should give it a little bit more stability. Okay, so the inner line, you want to go ahead and baste this, your, um, in, your inner lining fabric. So this is the denim I told you about. And you're going to go ahead and put it on the back side of your main fabric. And you're going to make sure you stay within the seam allowance. And the seam allowance, in this case, is a half an inch. So you just want to make sure you stay within a half an inch and just go all the way around your, um, your brim. And then you just treat this piece as one, one piece and then you just follow the directions in the pattern. So now we can move on to piece number 10, which is the crown piece for view E, the hat. And so what you're going to do is go ahead and pin your main fabric that's already been interfaced and you already took off a little um, piece of the interfacing here at the top according to the directions. So after you do that, what you're going to do is go ahead and sew down at a half inch seam allowance from the bottom to your um, dot here. And you're going to continue doing that all the way around. You can do this one at one piece at a time or you can do it all at once by pinning it all together. So that's what you can do for the main fabric. And then the next thing you're going to do is do the same thing for your lining fabric as well. Okay, so after you have your lining piece and your main fabric piece of the crown created, what you're going to do is you're going to insert your lining piece into the main fabric piece wrong size facing. So it's going to go in like this. And you're going to go ahead and match up all of your seams. So now after you go ahead and pin it all the way around, you're just going to go ahead and baste that all the way around the bottom edge. And you can do that by hand or on with your longest stitch on your sewing machine. Okay, so now that you have your crown pieces together and all basted around, the next thing you're going to do is work on your brim pieces. And you're just going to go ahead and sew the short ends together at a half inch seam allowance for both pieces. So you're going to sew those both down at a half inch. All right, so after you go ahead and you sewn up your uh, side seams for your brim pieces, you're going to take your two brim pieces right sides together, match it up the seams. And you're going to pin up the bottom. You're going to pin the bottom all the way around. So after you pin it all the way around, you're just going to stitch it all the way around at a half inch. And if you interlined, you're going to go ahead and remove your basin stitches after you've sewn it all the way around. Okay, so after you go ahead and sew that down, I'm going to go ahead and trim down the edge a little bit. And then after you do that, you're going to turn it out and then you're going to base this down. After you go ahead and finish trimming it and then you turn it in right side out and then you're going to base this circle here. So once you have your um, brim sewn together and baste it in the middle what you're going to do first what you're going to do next is go ahead and quilt the brim of the hat and you first start off by doing a stay stitch around the middle at a half inch and then you're just going to go make circles around that until you get all the way to the end and you're going to use your presser foot as a guide so let me show you how i'm gonna do that so i'm starting at the half inch mark on my stitch plate and i'm going to go around and i Put mine at 3.0 uh, millimeter stitch length. And then I'm just going to go around. I'm starting at the seam. So you're going to want to overlap your um, first stitch with your last stitch. 
So after you have your first line of stitching in, you're going to use this line as a guide for your next rows all the way down. So you can line your presser foot up with the previous stitching line. I moved my uh, needle over about two, sti two um, spaces over so it could be pretty much close to a half inch. I used my ruler to go ahead and measure it out. This ruler is a half inch ruler. And so that's how I can tell that it's a half inch. And that's what it says in the directions. But you can put it at whatever width you want to on your machine. And then you just keep doing that all the way around. And I like using this clear uh, press of foot so I can see everything a bit better. But you can do it with your regular press of foot. So once you've completed quilting up the brim area of your hat, you're going to go ahead and attach your crown. You're going to match up the seam of your brim with one of the seams of your crown. You pop a pin in it. Then you pop a pin on the other side, right at the other halfway mark, well, halfway area. And then you put one in the middle on this side. Try to make it as even as you can. Okay, so you pin it, and then if you have any spaces where it's a little tight, you can go ahead and do some snips, but don't go past your um your stay stitching, your first row of stitches, which is is your stay stitching. So you can do a, a tiny little snip, and if you have any other tight spaces, you can just do another little snip and to the brim part, but not not the crown part. Try not to go too deep. This last one is a little too deep, but I work around it. Okay, and then you're just going to base around this top part. You can do it on your machine or hand base it, whatever your preference. And then we'll come back and we're going to add ribbon over the seam. Okay, so after you go ahead and you baste your um, brim to the crown, what you're going to do is you're going to take your ribbon and fold it in a half inch and then line that up with your basting stitches. And then pin that all the way around on your basing stitch. And I did mine in a different color so I could see a little bit better. I did that in white and my other stitching is in yellow. So I can see it a little bit better. And this one I did do on the machine. The rest of my basing I did by hand. But you can do what you want. But I think with this one I think it would, would probably be better to do it on the machine just so you can make sure it's even. even like like it. So you can have to your basic stitch all the way around. Then you want to overlap it a little bit here. And I'm going to leave the tail until the very end just in case it's a little bit longer. But I'm going to still pin it. Right here. And so I'm going to sew that all the way around. So you're supposed to sew it all the way around once and then go in another quarter inch from that last stitch and do it twice. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and... Kind of edge stitch this right where the the um, basting stitches are, and those are in white. And I'm lining up my ribbon to that, and then I moved it over about three ticks, so I'm gonna make sure it's all lined up. And so I'm gonna go ahead and 
sew this down all the way around. Okay, so I did one row and then so I'm going to take out all of my other um, basting stitches that were holding the crown pieces together. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the second row a quarter inch from this section. Okay, so now that I have my two rows of stitching the ribbon down, I'm going to go ahead and trim this down so that the seam won't be too bulky. Okay, so next make sure you go ahead and remove any other basting stitches that you have. And then you're going to go ahead and press this ribbon up. So after you do the two rows of stitching to attach the ribbon, I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch the ribbon all the way around just to make it so more secure. So you just go ahead and do a single thread. You're just going to take a little bite out of your lining fabric and then attach it to the ribbon. You just continue like that all the way around. But so after you've gone ahead and uh, slip stitched the ribbon down, um, which is optional, but I had to because mine wasn't totally covering up the seam. And so, but once you've done that, you can go ahead and do the final step. So the final step is to go ahead and edge stitch the crown. And so I'm using my edge stitch foot, but you can use your blind hem foot. Most machines have a blind hem foot. Or you can just do it by eye. And what you're going to do is start at the center back seam. And you're going to lower your presser foot. And then I'm going to move my um, needle over a little bit. And then I'm going to keep the center here in the seam. And then that way this will be all lined up all along the edge. So, And I'm going to do it at 3.0 millimeter stitch line. And I move my needle over back to about two. So that is my tutorial of 8212. All you have to do is give it a final press and then you're done. Um, so I really do highly recommend this pattern. It's a really fun pattern and I was able to make it in this really fun floral print that I picked up in New York a couple years ago um, at the Jackson Heights um, fabric store, which is no longer in business. But any kind of cotton will do. Any kind of quilting cotton. You can even use a nice uh, car print. Any nice sturdy cotton would do well. I think it would look cute in denim as well too. So I think you would enjoy wearing this really fun hat. If I made it again, I might interface it a little bit more. Um, use a heavier, a little bit of a more heavier interfacing with it um, and maybe interline both pieces. But I still love how it turned out because it's nice and foldable. It'll be easy to pack this up for vacation because you can fold it up 
in your bag and you can put it in your purse um, in your plane on the plane um, if you're going on vacation it'd be great for the beach and of course it's great for the garden to protect yourself from the sun all right anyway thank you so much for checking out the tutorial and give this um, video a big thumbs up on your way out and if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and hit the su subscribe button and as well as the bell notification so that you don't miss out on any future videos all right thank you so much for watching take care bye